Okay, class, today's lesson is about perspective and how using different perspectives can give you a different mood, change the story, change the look, give you a different vibe, okay? So all of this will be shot on my iPhone XS. So if you have an iPhone or a mobile phone with a zoom feature, you will be able to replicate, replicate, you will be able to replicate this uh, tactic. And if you have a camera, with the zoom lens, like a kit lens, you'll, you'll be able to do the same thing as well. Okay, so the three main, I guess, perspectives or zoom ranges, or what I consider the three main, is you have wide, you have middle, and you have up close, so you have tight, right? So right now we're at a wide angle with this uh, iPhone X. And this iPhone XS, at the wide angle, it's like um, equivalent to like a 28 millimeter lens. So this is like a typical wide angle lens deep by default, right? But then if we zoom in a little bit more, this is the equivalent of a 50 millimeter lens, right? So we have now a 50 millimeter and then she's closer. And then we can zoom in even further um, to say like a hundred or a 200 millimeter up close but let's go back boom now we're at the wide angle right so wide angles are typically used to tell more of a story to see more of a scene so what i mean by that is if you get up close to your subject or your model and you want to include more of the surroundings more context of the image you want to get up close or you want to just show more of the scene okay so in this scene we have our model right here let's say if i wanted to tell a story if i want to show a picture with my model with all of the scene or all of the surrounding elements we're here at a wider angle and we have all of the surrounding elements. But the thing about a wide angle is depending on how close or how far you're away, it can be distorted. So I can get closer to the model right here and then we can have up close and still have some elements on this side, some elements on that side. You know she's like close to plants or I can step back and then zoom in and then have the same angle, same angle of view. Now, as you can see right here, we're still having the same elements on the side, but she's tighter into the screen. It also appears a little bit closer to her. Okay, now as you can see, we're zoomed in even closer and there's a bit more perspective here. And then we also have more greenery on the outside. Now there's a clear difference between all the three images and how they look. Now I'm gonna take a picture in all three settings and then I'm gonna show you guys the results. Okay, so now we've talked about a wide angle and how the wider angle allows you to have more context of the scene, have, gives you the ability to see the entire scene, the entire area, the entire space that you're looking at. But what about the other two? What about medium and then what about tight, right? Something tight like that. Why would you use these two? Well, you would go to a medium to tight focal length to give more, um, less distortion, right? So I have a model here. If I zoom in a little bit, there's less distortion on the face, on the features, than if it's tight or a medium. What that does is when you go to a medium or like a tight focal length, you get a more flattering, you get a more true to life representation of whatever the subject is, whatever you're looking at. If you're at a wide angle and you zoomed in, let me show you. If you're at a wide angle and you zoomed in, that's like the nose looks bigger, the eyes just look, the face, just everything looks like distorted and like exaggerated. But if you zoom out and do that same thing, now look that way. See, now everything looks more proportioned, right? Her nose looks smaller, more flattering to the face. It doesn't look exaggerated. So that's the difference. That's why you want to use a wider versus a tighter angle. Because depending on the kind of mood or the kind of feel that you're trying to give to your images, if you want to have a more exaggerated look or an exaggerated feel to the shots, then you want the wider angle. But if you want a more true to life, if you want a more flattering representation, then you want to go tighter or like even longer. So I love doing portraits. When I typically shoot portraits of people, if I want a more flattering angle, I'm usually going to shoot at like a 50 millimeter 
which is something like this. I'm gonna shoot at this focal length or even tighter, like an 85 or 100 millimeter. And the tighter you go, the more flattering it is. On top of that, it also, um, like I said, decreases distortion. It also introduces compression, okay? So compression is essentially what squeezes everything together, brings everything tighter, it compresses the image. So let me show you how, compressions work, how compression works. Okay, so here we have another scene and we're at Wright Park, right? We have this like uh, body of water here. It's like a little pond or something like that, man-made pond. And we have a statue right there on the side. If you've been to Wright Park, if you've been to a park before, you know that that statue is not very close to where I'm standing, to where the model is, right? It looks pretty far away. And this wide angle really gives you the sense of how far away, especially if I come up here, you can see that she's right here and the statue is very far away in the back. It looks pretty wide, right? What compression does is compression will help tighten everything up and bring it closer. So I'm gonna show you. So now we're at a 50. The model looks more proportioned and the statue in the back looks a little bit closer now. Now the statue looks a little bit closer, not as close. You can still, still tell it's pretty far away, but it doesn't look as far away as it did uh, with the wider angle look. So now I'm gonna zoom in even tighter and try to give you the same feel, but bring the statue in even closer to the model. Like right here, she was right here and it's closer. Now I'm gonna try again. Okay, boom. Now we're zoomed in as far as I can go out on this phone and the statue looks like it's right behind her. It, look like, it looks like it's creeping up behind her like it's about to tap her on the shoulder, okay? You should run away now, the statue's coming to get you. Okay, don't, don't, don't worry, don't. <laughs> so, um, with a longo focal length or a zoom lens that will also not only have your model more proportion and like more flattering angle but it also brings the background in closer so if you want to shoot or you want to take pictures where the background looks closer to the model or the background seems not as distracting use a longo focal length so check it out all right if i zoom out see how we have all of this distracting elements in the background all of this stuff and if you want that, that's fine. But let's say you don't want that. Let's just say you want the model with like the statue to be the, 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 the shot. You want to zoom in. You want to use a longer focal length. You want to zoom into the, you want to zoom into the image or to the subject. And then that'll make your background less distracting. I'm right here. I have like the rule of thirds. I have the, in the, on the, wait. I have my model right here on this third angle. I'm going to keep her at the same angle. I'm going to zoom in. She's at the same spot. Look how close the statue is. If I zoom all the way out and put her in the same angle, now look how that changes. She's still in the same position to my phone. She's on the rule of thirds on the right third of the screen. But now look at all this stuff over here. So zooming in not only gives you a more flattering um, viewpoint, but it also brings in the background in closer and makes the background less distracting. And as well, and now actually I'm gonna take some shots on the actual phone and show you the difference what it looks like with actual images instead of this video. Thank <laughs> you.